Hello folks, Chaz here, and today I'm going to show you a quick and easy little project uh, that's actually pretty fun. It's a, a photograph holder, picture holder. It can also be used for, uh, you know, things like business cards or price tags, um, you know, that's what I use these for, uh, primarily photographs uh, around the house and then to hold uh, price cards for the things that I sell um, when I go do my uh, farmer's markets and that sort of thing, selling my turning. So um, it's, a, it's a very simple little project. It uses scraps of wood and uh, you know some, some other materials that you have around the house uh, readily available. So let me show you how we're gonna do this. First of all, what you need, um, I'm using a scrap of coca bolo. This is uh, really not big enough to do anything else with. I mean, I could make uh, you know some jewelry with it or whatever, but uh, it, it's not large enough really to make a bottle stopper. Um, just a scrap, just a scrap piece. You probably got a lot of these things laying around. Uh, coca bolo is a good one for this because it's it's fairly dense wood, kind of heavy. Uh, you need a little weight in that base. Uh, you know, especially if you get sort of tall with the uh, with the metal holder. But uh, you need this. You need uh, some Turner's tape. So the Turner's tape I get from uh, Woodcraft. This is a two-inch wide Turner's tape. Holds really well. Uh, I'm doing this on a face plate, which is just a piece of uh, oak that I have screwed to a metal face plate. Uh, you need a gouge. You're going to need. Uh, the Jacobs chuck with a, a drill bit that matches the diameter of your wire for your holder. Um, so obviously this is a, a fairly small drill bit. Uh, it matches the wire I'm going to use. And if you make these things larger, then you would need a bigger drill bit, obviously, and bigger wire. So my Turner's tools, uh, you know, gouges and uh, that sort of thing, and then a little uh, super glue. So let's look at how we're going to do this thing real quick. I am going to take a piece of Turner's tape. I'm going to put it on my face plate for round one of the uh, Turner's tape action here. Peel that off. Now I've got a center mark on my turning block here, um, and it is on the rough side. This is the roughest side of the piece. The back side is fairly smooth, so that's the one I'm going to stick to the tape. And I'm going to center this guy up, and really all I'm looking to do at this point is smooth out the face, true the face up and make it nice and flat. This is going to be the bottom of the piece. But it's also, when I'm going to spin this thing around and stick the bottom to the tape so I can profile the top. And so the bottom has to be nice and smooth. And so I'll bring the tailstock up for the majority of this work. And I'm going to use a, a bowl gouge and shear scrape the face of this thing nice and smooth. So we'll go ahead and get that done. good out to the sides here and now I'm going to remove the tailstock so that I can get the very center and there's there's only the Turner's tape holding this thing on so I need to be very very careful here light cut all right so now let's take a look and see how good we're doing here if I press the the gouge into the face of the piece, I'll end up burnishing the high spots and I can see where I still need to remove some wood. So 
So looking in here, I've got some shiny right there in the center. And I would say that's probably going to do it. So now I can remove the piece. And I've got to put in a new fresh piece of Turner's tape. You don't want to try to reuse the stuff. So a fresh piece of Turner's tape. And now we're going to take that, that face that we just trued up. We're going to put that on there. Now the one thing that I need to do real quick just to minimize the uh, amount of roughing I have to do on these corners and to preserve the, the, you know, the most of the diameter of the pieces, I need to go ahead and mark my center so that I can use my revolving center to center the piece on the tape. So just put it on those marks, lock down, and then use the tailstock to really apply pressure and, and seat this, this block into that tape really, really well. Okay. into this face plate at this point but I'm not going to try to take all of that off at this point so so now I'm gonna I'm gonna profile the piece and I'm just gonna give it a just a gentle dome top nothing fancy because I want to leave as much of the wood as I can there for weight Okay, so at this point, I've got it rounded off on the top. I'm going to shear scrape a little bit with the tailstock in place and try to smooth out the, uh, the, the sides as much as possible before I sand. All right, that's got that. Now here on this side. Okay, and then carefully, I'm going to go ahead and shear scrape just this, this top part here. And it's in grain, there's nothing holding this thing on but the tape, so I'm going to be very careful. Alright, that's pretty good. I think that'll get me to the sanding part here. I'll say really quickly, I'm just going to sand this guy. Now, normally, uh, especially with Coca Bolo, I would use uh, dust collection, but it's pretty noisy, so I'm going to forego it here.
for a piece of paper towel. Just a piece of 400 here. Coca Bolo really polishes up nicely. All right, so I want to embellish the sides just a little bit. So I will. Uh, I'm going to do some wire burn marks on this. And in order to do that, I'm going to take uh, a skew. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring the tail stock up while I burn this, just to. A little extra protection, so I'm going to put a couple of marks with the skew, and that gives me a place to, to hang the wire in there and uh, and not let it uh, drift around. Uh, and then what I have here is uh, my own little homemade wire burner. Uh, always put handles on it. You, you cannot hold the wire with your fingers, obviously. But this is just an old guitar string that I got from a friend of mine who uh, plays guitar. Uh, drop it in the groove, apply some pressure, and you'll get lots of smoke, and you'll get a nice black line on the piece. And then I need to come back with my 400 bit one more time. Sand that that edge again. All right, that looks look nice. Okay, so now I told you I was going to show you how to deal with this uh, this this foot that's still attached, and uh, we want to. A little bit of a bevel on that so that it looks nice sitting on the table. So for that, I'm going to come in with my skew again. And I'm going to very carefully come in and just remove that foot at a bit of an angle. So I'm just making a succession of V cuts, but only, only from one side, only from the, the, the the top side here. And I'll just remove a little bit more each time until until I'm all the way through the cocobolo and then into the uh, face plate, just ever so lightly. out for these little pieces they'll be coming off of there. I want to catch one of those in the face. All right, so I'm through the base and now I'm into the tape. I'm going to make one more cut with the skew which should give me a really smooth surface. Sandpaper and just hit that surface just to make sure that it's nice and clean. Yeah. Okay, and now the, the last thing is I'm going to put some mylins on this, this guy and uh, give it a little bit of a sheen. So I'm going to back the tailstock away, clean all the dust off of it. I could probably sand that a little bit more, but I'm going to spare you guys that. I'll go ahead and take my 
Mylon's friction polish and apply it to the piece. I'm going to get it up under the undercut there that I just made. Get that good and wet. Okay, so one more step here. And that is we're going to take our Jacob's chuck with our drill bit. And we're going to drill a hole. It doesn't have to be very deep. Just something in the uh, well, you know, half inch range. So comes off of there pretty easy. And we've got our base. Now it's time to make the wire. So I'm sure you've got a few of these around the house. This is just a wire coat hanger. The, uh, the diameter of the wire matches the drill bit that I used for the hole. All right, so that's, that's really the only thing that's important here. Um, and then obviously this one is, has a sort of bronze color or whatever, so that's, that's nice. Um, you know, white, the white ones are painted. They'll chip off. Uh, you know, the green ones and that sort of thing, they're, they're painted. These have some sort of a, an anodized finish and then like a plastic coating over that, but they seem to hold up pretty well. So I've just cut one wing off. Of the uh, of the coat hanger here, and I'm going to carefully bend a little 90 degree notch there, and then ideally I would wrap some tape or something around these jaws so I don't scratch this thing. But I'm going to try to straighten this out just a little bit without scratching it, <clears throat> and then. This little bent piece right here is a hook into which I'm going to insert that into my jig. So <clears throat> what I've got here is just a, a little oak dowel with the diameter I'm wanting for my finished loop. Okay, so this is, I believe this is a 7 8 inch. So I'm just going to stick the uh, that, that 90 degree bend that I made right there into the wood, anchor it, and then carefully I'm going to roll a loop in this wire. There's one turn and two turns. So I'm back to where I started. Right, and now I'm just going to, because of the notch that I'm using, the hole that I'm using is notched there and it's really close to the end of the dowel, I can just slip it right off. Right, so uh, I don't have to wrestle with getting this thing off of here. So now I'm going to take my line lens pliers again, or you can use needle nose or whatever you happen to have around here, and I'm going to center now this loop. I'm going to center it on. on the wire, right? So now it's instead of coming up and going off to the side, it's coming up right in the middle there and twisting around. So now the only the only question for me is how high do I want this thing to be? Um, you know I've got if I straighten this thing out I got six or seven inches um, which would probably be a little high for this base, right? This base isn't that broad so it's not going to be that you know super sturdy, particularly if you're Using it in a windy environment, um, like on your table at a at a, you know, a craft fair or whatever. So uh, I'm going to leave this one in the sort of the three inch range, I think. So I'll just take it and cut it off right there, and and now I can slip it into the hole that I drilled. And uh, the, you know the last step at this point is to just apply a little super glue. Which I happen to have right here. So I'm going to put just a, a little drop of glue on the bottom and stick it in there. 
I'll spin it around a little bit. Now I could hit that with accelerator, but in, in this case it's going to be it's going to be dry here in just a second anyway. So, so there it is. That is the finished piece. And um, again, these can be used for pictures, uh, you know, photographs on a shelf or on a table. Uh, another great use for these is for name tags. You can make them smaller, use smaller wire, and uh, you can put name tags there for place settings for a dinner. Um, you can you can use it to display your business card so you know people come into my office at work they'll see my business card sticking in one of these and that believe it or not this thing can be really tight it can really get a killer grip on your piece so you know be, beware of that if you go to put a, a photograph that's sort of flimsy in there you're going to have to you know be careful about how you insert it but it just slides in and it'll hold it there nicely and you've got a way to display a photo, business card, name tag, price tag, etc. etc. So again we used scrap of wood that really was good for nothing else and uh, we were able to do that because of the Turner's tape and the faceplate. We used a coat hanger of which I'm sure you've got a million of those uh, on hand and we used a little bit of uh, glue a little super glue. Um, so it's a it's a great project. You can make a bunch of these at once, sort of set up a little uh, assembly line, go to town, make great gifts, and there you have it. So thanks for watching. <laughs>